Here we are inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. I just want to mention this off the top because I listen to all the podcasts and I heard Vince say this last time like I was taking a shot at Alhambra, but I really enjoy our time here. It is a wonderful part of Los Angeles. These rolling hills, beautiful, beautiful foliage. Come back here tomorrow. The heat's coming back, though. Yeah, come back here tomorrow <laughs> this time and tell me if you feel the same. I've really enjoyed it since we've had those you know, back-end winter days, but it's, we all know we have a, a big heat wave. We also have a big game coming this week, and we're going to talk about oh. that here. Max and Vince here, the MVP podcast. We have a very special guest, as we always do, a man with a very interesting story to tell right now, and that is LAFC, mostly midfielder, but has, or has played fullback as well this season. Of course, I'm talking about Kellen Acosta, who is part of the U.S. qualifying effort, and that is uh, it's big in any year, but certainly bigger when you look at what happened to the U.S. US five years ago. And Kellen was a part of that. He was a like, part of that, and we'll talk to him about we it. We talked a little bit before Kellen came over here off air, you and I just saying, like, man, what must it have been like for some of those guys that didn't get the chance to write the record? Like, they've, they've, some of them have never been the same. Yeah. Uh, Kellen, man, I, I can't imagine, and thank, thank goodness it didn't happen this way, but I can't imagine if they would have missed again. Like, not far-fetched. The fortitude, uh, I'll tell you what. And by I mean, the way, we should say, because people think if, if Costa Rica caught them, the U.S. still have a chance to qualify. They would have finished yes. fourth, and you'd have to like their chances, but we'd have a, an odd conversation. But that extra amount of pressure, and then to wait till June to go to <sighs> Qatar to try to finish that off, I mean, thank, thank, again, thank goodness, but I, just, I can't imagine the wherewithal to, to continue on, to be quite honest with you, because you could, you could see it lifted off him, and you'll see it when we talk with him. He's, he's a thoughtful guy, and he, this meant something extra to him and now he's just got to dovetail it right into a, the biggest rivalry in MLS yeah the images of that of that Kuva I still remember and the players afterwards and how affected and they're still affected all the guys are on the field that day and some of them don't have a chance to fix that but there was like I think three holdovers in Pulisic was there Pulisic Kellen Acosta I want to say uh, DeAndre Yedlin are those three yes. guys because most of these guys are all going to their first everyone's going to their first World Cup one of the youngest team in the World, World Cup will be yeah so guys. all of this it's, uh, it's exciting time and as you saw check out the video on LAFC's social media accounts we have our yeah, we broke World it down. Cup explainer and Kellen we potentially could have six LAFC players on World Cup squads but we have plenty of time to discuss that what we don't have a lot of time to discuss is episode one of the Clásico Angelino. We, and we know everyone calls it a little different, and that's part of the story here. Call it whatever it's you built. want. Call it what you like. But Just the, be there either in person or tuning in, right? Yes, and it's going to be on Big Fox, 4.30 local time here in California, but we know it's going to be one of these games that's going to draw a big national audience, which is something that Major League Soccer desperately needs Added to the fact that this is the first time we're going to likely see, we don't know it 100% truth, a lot can happen, Chicharito versus Vela, mm -hmm. which is huge in its own case. But there's so much more to this game. But it, it's here. It comes, at a, it comes at a great time. It's early in the season, yes, but it comes at a great time because we look at a team that is playing great in LFC and a team that's playing pretty well in the Galaxy. And those are the games I want to see. When teams yeah. are playing well, they are. Yeah, first... Is this the first time where both teams are kind of riding high? Yeah, I think so. Remember, it was usually all over the shop. The other. Usually it was the Galaxy down there, and the problem yeah. was that they would catch LAFC and yep. stop they all their that, momentum. They would use that game to... And that would prop them up. Yeah. But this, I think, as we come into this weekend, LAFC's first in the West, and by a good amount, certainly by this early stage, and the Galaxy are third. Yeah, it's interesting. Different. So, you know, in the stands... And the personalities of the fan bases, they're the same. That doesn't change the culture. Uh, but very much these teams' personalities have changed. So I, I'm very interested to see, because generally what we've seen from these games is an LAFC that wants to play their way and play a little bit of football, and a Galaxy team that said, first and foremost, we're going to jump on you. We're going to get at you, kick you a little bit, uh, make you feel uncomfortable. I think they'll still have a bit of that to them. But Greg Vanny does seem to want his team to play a little bit more. Um, I think we saw a little bit of that in last season's. Um, but the flip side is LAFC is now a team that says you're not going to kick us. You're not going to kick us around anymore. So I'm, I'm interested to see how the personalities play out in this one. And this is where the, the rivalry and the teams take center stage because so much changes in the history of these games. Carlos Vela is the one connector through it all. Mm -hmm. And he was there in the Leading score in the rivalry. Uh, he has had so many incredible moments, including that first one, which, which was a Zlatan game. But Carlos Vela had uh, such a big 
It's a game that you, if you ever turn it to the Fox channels, they air it as a little. Yes. There's a little clip of it that they put on there, and you always stop and watch it again because it was a very important game, the playoff game. But this is very different. This is Greg Vanny. He'll have his second. He was there last season, but this will be Steve Churindolo's first. We always talk about the eight new players for LAFC. The Galaxy have changed a bit as well. This is going to be Chicharito's first. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not going to be not his, his first, first against his Vela. First against Vela. And Vela's first against. So there's a lot of firsts there. So there's a, it's a there's that newness which is good. But I also like the evo evolution mm -hmm. of uh, of a rivalry, and we're going to see that here. And new memories created. Yeah, I think. This is good because we're talking about two teams. I think we all have wanted to see Vela Chicharito. But I think really, if you really look at this game, you're looking at two teams from top to bottom that when they line up against each other, there's a lot of interesting matchups throughout. You've got Chicharito against our center back pairing, a young Mamadou Fall, Jesus Murillo. Uh, you wonder how these fullbacks, uh, you got Araujo on one side, trying to get down that right-hand side with Chiqui Palacios tracking him, or maybe Ryan Hollingshead. Could Franco Escobar be healthy for this game at right back? We don't know. Uh, he has been back in training, so that's that's a good sign, but he was out for a little bit. Then, you know, you don't really think of midfields with the Galaxy per se, and now they're going to miss a big guy in their midfield. Mark Delgado picked up a second yellow card immediately. I like how you called him Mark. We, he wants to go by Mark now, so I will, that's what I'm I will give him that. Out of respect. I will give him that out of respect, but he's not going to play in this game. Uh, and immediately I got to my phone and said, he's going to regret that one, and he did, because it was such a stupid foul. Yeah. It was an easy yellow, and so I think the game. You don't want guys missing this game. You don't want guys missing this game, but it's interesting how they've actually crafted their midfield a little bit more um, to where they can actually play out of it and not just kick you. Um, but yeah, without Mark Delgado, it's going to be interesting who they who they pair with uh, Revolson. And we know our three are probably going to be Acosta, Ilya Sifu, or or even Latif, who's had a couple of good games. So the, I think the midfield battle might be mu that much more important in this game than it has in past games. There's a uh, Ilya Sanchez, uh, Victor Vasquez, friends from the Barcelona days. They'll mm -hmm. be, they'll probably get, get, see each other a fair bit. If, it's, if Victor Vasquez, Vasquez plays, yeah. Ilya Sanchez will be near him a lot of yes. that match. And obviously, the big story is, is finding a way to quell Chicharito and the Galaxy coming off a win where he just was vintage little P. Mm -hmm. Being able to get these two goals that got LA Galaxy really a, a statement win in Portland. It showed their intentions ahead of this game. We always look up, talk about looking ahead. Galaxy didn't look ahead. LAFC certainly didn't look ahead in a game that, look, we'll be frank. When you look at the, the way LAFC's playing, you're like, yeah, they can go and beat Orlando. Mm -hmm. They have multiple players coming back from international duty. It's going to be a quick flight in another cross country trip. You know, if they lose this game, we get it. Yeah. Right? We get it. But then they go out there and win in uh, a, go a, goal, a game that felt very nostalgic because of the goal scoring as well. Uh, and win by a clear two goals. It was very competitive. Orlando gave them their best shot, but I just... <laughs> A very satisfying win. Yeah, weird to say in year five, it felt like a bit of an old school LAFC game where it was like, we'll just outscore you. It's three to two. It's three to two. And look, guess what? Our center back is going to run the full length of the pitch and he's going to finish this game off. You're right. It felt, it felt a little bit nostalgic. I think someone tweeted it was the first four goal game since I mean, early 2020, but that, you know, we would get four goal games, five goal games. Uh, didn't we beat? No, we beat SKC four goals. I'm sorry, you're right. One That's right. In 2020. That was a big, the big turnaround game. But what didn't feel nostalgic is the, the way the LAFC is getting these results. Yeah. And they, 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 they let Orlando get the ball. Mm -hmm. And they defended and they waited. And, I mean, even the final goal, counterattacking never was LAFC's forte. And oh, that's not true. We, we've been good in it transition. It was good. It was we good in transition. We don't look to only counter. Correct. But there were some moments there where they did, and it mm -hmm. found a lot of success. They let Orlando make mistakes. And they pounced on them. So there, it's a very different LAFC, but I like the familiar tones as well. But just in closing on that, for LAFC to be able to put that result together and come in here with this momentum, it just adds to the pot. It really does. I will say the, the one thing that you got to look out for from that match is the, the ability that they had to sit back in the second half and let them have a little bit of the ball was because they erased the mistakes. The first half, you saw a couple goals because maybe some misassignments, maybe some miscommunication. You cannot do that against Chicharito. I mean, Pato showed 
he's going to find little gaps to get into. He's a different player than Chicharito. But if you miss your assignments in this game, I think it's going to come down to what kind of pressure you can get on the ball. Because if you got a guy like Vic Victor Vasquez able to pick his head up and then Chicharito, as he did in Portland, able to zig and zag and really turn your center backs inside out, then you're going to be looking at trouble. You're going to be looking at chances created. But if you can get pressure to the ball, you can keep Chicharito bracketed just a little bit and then just don't miss your assignments because you know he's never going to stop moving. That's his game. That's his forte. The second he gets in that 18-yard box, he's going to poke and prod every little bit to create a bit of space. And sometimes he'll even just do it just to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, keep you on keep you on edge. And Rodolfo Landeros had that little video from the game that he posted, which uh, went viral, and you could see the movement moving what did post said? to post to Mariano post. Mariano said the, uh, the defender had his belly button on his back or something like that, <laughs> or on his hip, and I said, that's, that's a great save. That's a good one. Check out uh, Mariano on... Uh, 110 Football's Expansion Mansion. It's out right now on the 110 Football YouTube channel for more of those great one-liners and catchphrases, which are good. Uh, you, you, you talk about, and I think about that footage, and I think of Chicharito, and I immediately say, okay, if it is Jesus Murillo and Mama Dufal, and they've started every game with the exception of one time Daniil Henry came in for Jesus in the Inter-Miami game, that these two guys have to be aligned. Maxime Crepo, who's been great and making sure they know where they He's are. He's a guy that I'm very, that's very the one, glad he'll be playing yeah, in this that's match a, for Yeah, that's where I get more comfortable with the Chicharito game. Mm -hmm. Knowing that these two center backs can do the job, but because Maxime Crepeau can be there as a constant reminder. Well, let's do an exercise between you and me. Okay. Most important player on each no team that's not so. named Chicharito and Vela. I would smoke you in a push-up contest. <laughs> I have a lot more weight to carry, though. That's not fair. Not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> One arm push ups were my thing, by the way, back in the day, but you know, that was a long, long okay, time Bruce ago. Okay, Bruce Lee. <laughs> so, so name, let's pick one player from each team that we think are going to be influential in this game that's not named Carlos Vela Chicharito. Let's start with LAFC. Okay. Uh, your, your choice. You, you, you go first. I will say, uh, uh, because of what he's done, I'll go with Brian Rodriguez, and you go with the goal that, could, that he was able to score if he's able to attack these good fullbacks. Mm. Uh, and I'm going to give you my Galaxy one, which will kind of counterpoint this as yep. well, is a guy that uh, he didn't really, we talked about it, he didn't really do that as effectively. He, he found other ways to affect the game. But I think this is somewhere where he might be able to get through there. Okay. I'm going to go for LAFC Ilya Sanchez. Is this, that, he, that's, the crazy thing about that is it's... It's not mind-blowing. I know. No, it's not mind-blowing, but it's, you almost feel like a comfort that... That job gets done regardless of opponent, regardless of which week in the calendar, whatever it is, who, regardless of the players in front of him. You just get that, and it goes without saying, which it shouldn't. Well, which look, it shouldn't. I love him and I miss him, El Profe. But think of, try to think of the good games Edward Atuesta had against the Galaxy. They had a plan to really slow him down. And when you slow down El Profe, then you slow down Carlos Vela, you slow down Brian Rodriguez, you slow down Dio. Uh, and I just think that... Ilya has a slightly different skill set that if he's on his game and the way he plays, the Galaxy are going to find it very hard to get close to him. And then just the way he buoys the defense and, def and defense so good. and his balance. So that's, that's my pick. Now let's move on to the Galaxy. Who's Well, I, what I said about Brian Rodriguez, I'm going to say Julian Araujo because he, he's done it against LAFC. I know. He's every time I say, there. I, you know, I don't really he has he had goes his, out and has a goal in two assists. He has his best games. Yes, against he, LAFC, he up for this game. and he's been up and down. He's look, he's been part of the Mexican setup. No, but you can but count on him to be up guy. for this. He's going to be up for this. Yeah. God. Are you agreeing? I agree, <laughs> and I just hate to agree because again, I like him as a player. I don't rate him quite as highly as some people do, but then every time I say that, it seems to be close to an El Trafico game, and uh, this happens. It, so the, I, the a bigger key is if the Galaxy can get somebody who can partner effectively with Chicharito. I think. Which yeah. they don't, if somebody who can kind of distract, someone who can be a decoy, someone who can get the goal because they may be open because Chicharito's drawing so much attention. I think whoever fills that role, and it could be a, a variety of players, mm -hmm. well, that's where could I'm gonna have go. a huge impact. That's where I'm going to go with mine. He oh, might I thought not you were agreeing with Araujo. I thought we were both in agreement. No, with no, no, no. I'm going to oh, say okay, sorry. Douglas Costa. Did not play against Port, so he's going to. Yeah, he, they're, they're, he may be a game time decision. Uh, but to your point, I think that. I hope, and listen, I hope he plays. Yeah. I want. Everyone. I want Mark Delgado in. I want everyone to be in this game. A guy, so it's huge. Yeah, a guy that with the ball at his feet can start to pull defensive apart where now maybe you're having to send a center back out to, to back up a fullback, and now Chicharito is 1v1 with a center back. That can be very dangerous. So I think if he can be in this game, and if it's not him, then it's going to have to be Grant Sear or Kevin Cabral that somehow occupy a fullback 
plus a center back, because if you can keep two center backs, and look, Chicharito is good enough to beat two center backs, but I'd like my odds if we can keep both our center backs kind of bracketing him throughout the match. It's a, it's a fascinating matchup, and enjoy the week leading up to it. We know the supporters have uh, big plans, big numbers going down there. The buses are going to come down. The buses are going down. Buses are going down, and it's uh, everyone have a good time. Be safe out there and have a good time. And it was we, can't, we can't emphasize that enough. Yeah, With everything that's going on in the world, and, and look, the coming together, I think for both you and I both said, the coming together of the Galaxy Long and players and both the organizations to say, hey, guys, We've got the best rivalry. We don't need the other stuff. Yeah. But that's a breakthrough moment, too, because th th there was a separation in the clubs. The rivalry w rain was uh, paramount. Yeah. And that's fine. And I want to emphasize. But I'm it's a not, shared space. Max and I are not just speaking to supporters of both sides. We're speaking to you, the casual fan. This might be your first match. And maybe you're not, you might not be ready for the pace of it the way some players are not ready for rivalry matches. Just relax. Cooler heads prevail. Like, it, it's hot. It's heated there. I get it. And some people lose their heads. If this is your first match, think. Just think before you show up. Take a breath. Casual fans, we need you on your best behavior as well. Yeah, and expect uh, expect weird things happen. I remember was uh, was it the last time uh, LFC was down there, and as you walk in, they were having the ceremony Bad for Landon Donovan's. <laughs> And it They're was like, just, how, it was odd. How dare you boo him? What did you want us to do? Right. And look, and this is what I would say to that. Uh, look, Landon Donovan, maybe the greatest MLS player of all time. The MVP what award is named after him. He's named after him. He's a spectacular talent. Uh, I spent time with the Galaxy here and watching him play. He was amazing, as well as for the U.S. men's national team. But don't expect your rival to clap him. But don't expect your rival to clap him. But you already have this game here. Why don't you bring the Landon Donovan to another game so it can come yeah. up here? It's, the, old it's just minor league, the old minor league baseball method. you yeah, got to get people in the seats. We're already excited game. about this game. Yeah, there's no need to get people in the seats for this game. They're there, plus some. Yes. So uh, that was, you know, you ex expect some, uh, some, 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 three, some strange things when you arrive at uh, Disney Hill Sports Park. But just getting back to the, the two clubs coming together, this is how it should be, because if this rivalry wants to go even further, which it can. I mean, we've barely, we have barely rotated the tires on this sucker. This one's going to be huge. But it has to be LFC and Galaxy both kind of being gatekeepers for it and looking at these shared space moments like this where they can do it, where, where you activate players together. Maybe it's a PR thing or something on television where you have a Galaxy player, an LAFC player, and they... They, they stir the pot a little bit more, but they're together to show, uh, you know, this is the Los Angeles rivalry, this is the Los Angeles derby, and we can do that. So we haven't really started on that, but this was obviously uh, very good intentions. I, I think we could see more of that, which would make it even more special. Yeah, I'll use the analogy again. There's veteran players that know how to deal with the pressure and the pace and the gamesmanship of rivalries. There's a lot of you out there that are now veterans of this derby, whether you're a supporter or a casual fan. Show the next generation how, how you do it. And we can make this bigger by working together to make it bigger. doesn't mean we have to love everything that yeah. the other side does. But if we work together, it'll be that much bigger. And then it'll just be that much more, I don't know if safe's the word, but it is safe. Like, you have to feel like you can go to a match, cheer your heart out, boo the other side, and still leave there in one piece. Yeah. You have to. I'm sorry. It just, there's no, there should be no danger of that ever happening at a sporting event. Yeah, and... Uh, more often than not, 99% of the time, it goes off well. And that's why everyone's got to kind of be uh, very vigilant to see how those things go down. But we, this is just enormous for the supporters. We know that. There's no, there's no putting more layers on that. We know how important They always come with a surprise. Um, I don't know what it's going to be, but it, whether it's waiting to cheer, waiting a couple minutes in to cheer, or having a, a new chant ready, I'm very excited to see what they do. I, I, can't, I cannot take my eyes off of them in whatever section they're put in for these Galaxy matches because they're, they're electric literally from the second they walk in the building. And get there early because it happens early, right? Yes. They will be two hours. Well, we were there about two hours early last time. Did you see Already the colors loud. The, I love it. I mean, this is something, I, honestly, I've, I've been covering this league from almost the beginning. I always dreamt that we could see this where you could see something similar to what you see in South America and Europe. Mm -hmm. And it happened right away. I'll never forget that first game with the black and gold and the uh, balloons. And yep. that is maintained. And the, the march to this match, it, uh, it gets me very excited. I'm just so thrilled that I can participate in it as all of you are. And you guys know they, they crank that sound system the second you guys get in. And for us people in the media, it's really loud. 
the sound system, we love that you drown that out. So maybe break their sound system this time. Let's have them try to crank it up so high that just, and now we can just hear you guys. We've talked about some of the players in here and for LAFC, the start to the season has been remarkable. We both say there's so much left for them to do. And you talk to the players and they're not satisfied. Haven't hit the heights yet, I don't think. They've been so good. They're top of the West, top of MLS. I don't think they've, I can't point my finger on one game where I was like, that was the perfect game. Even in Orlando, obviously, clearly. That said, one thing I think they would want to work on, and I don't want to think you tempt it because and we talked about it on LAFC 360, falling behind. Mm. And they did it. Got to get a quick start. In LAFC's finish. been great. They've, they've fallen behind a little bit in some games, but, man, they've responded. This would be a good spot, I think, to, to play from yeah, out don't, front. I don't think you're going to find that same result. If you do that, I think you can definitely make a contest of it. Maybe you, maybe you pull out a draw, but in a rivalry match, it's going to take but so much they want to kick energy. that habit, right? They yes, wanna... and you want to kick that habit. Because, well, and look, you want to kick the habit of not taking points at Dignity Health Sports Park. There's a, there's a couple of things you can tick off the list here where if you get a good start and then you walk away with three points, man, you've set yourself up for the rest of the season. It, and then look, even if you don't, it's game six. Yes. We've also seen with uh, LAFC paying a, a, a heavy price for mistakes made. Uh, they have cleaned those up. They've cleaned up mistakes. Mm -hmm. And this is a spot that you want to make. It, whether the growth for the club improves in how they press or are in the attacking third and creating chances, one thing you want to say consistent, which I think they've done a good job. I saw two great instances in the Orlando City game where Jesus Murillo bangs the ball into outside the stadium, not messing around. He's not going to play it. Mamadou Fall did the same thing later on. Those are the things that you want to see them maintain. And, and they're on a really good trajectory with that. This is not the time to maybe say, okay, I'm going to try something against the, the grain. Yeah, if for a couple minutes you have to play it safe. Just the to, just to one, get your, your team under control get your breath under control. Maybe you're, you've been pushing and pressing, but also it, it lets the opposing team know, okay, we just send the ball down there. They're just going to clear it out. Then they, they kind of change a little bit. It changes their mentality a little bit. Now, if you want to play out the back all the time, that changes their mentality a little bit because they go, we can press all the time. So be safe in the moments you can and then play your moments. It's a rivalry. It's going to come down to one or two plays. Everyone wants that shot at LAFC. I can tell you this. I spoke to a lot of people at Orlando City. I mentioned on the broadcast. They circled that on their calendar, and LAFC was able to repel. This will be a similar situation. Times 10. We've covered it pretty. We've covered yeah, it, we've right? Yeah, we've covered this pretty I feel well. we've already talked. I think it's we only... should go to our guest because he's got some good answers we'll for this do. stuff, too. We will be back here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Vince podcast. Joining us, LAFC midfielder Kellen Acosta. We'll be right back. And we are back here on Inside LAFC, the Max and Viz podcast. Uh, thrilled to welcome in not only LAFC midfielder, sometimes fullback, Kellen Acosta, but now World Cup qualified midfielder, sometimes fullback, left and right footed, Kellen Acosta. <laughs> and that's one of the great things about you. And we'll talk about what you bring to the table here for LAFC. But I got to ask you, for someone who was on the field at one point in the game in Cuba to finish the job here, what went through your mind? What were the first things, emotions that you felt knowing that you are part of qualifying for the World Cup? Just a sense of relief. It was a, a long uh, seven months of, of qualifiers and even longer span of just, what, five years since we had the disappointment in, was it cute? How do you say it? Cuba? Cuba, Cuba. You've already forgotten it. I love it. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, an afterthought, right? Um, but no, I mean, now I'm just so excited to you know, finally be done with, uh, with qualifiers and you know, all eyes on to, to, to Doha in the next six months. So excited for it. Yeah. Is there, this is obviously, it, it's weird because you have to recalibrate things. He's like, we qualified, I'm excited. Now you have to be like, now, the, now these seven months take on a whole different size because you're going to the biggest sporting event on the planet. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, got, you know, through the hardest part, which is the qualifiers and to, you know, to get over that hump. But now it's just kind of just changed our focus on to be ready for, for uh, um, you know, what's ahead. Um, but, you know, for us, it's just to, to be present in the moment. I mean, we got to, you know, be in top form so we can compete and to, you know, be at our best come uh, November. Now for the real questions. <laughs> oh, that was a real question. You recently was... did. This guy. Yeah. No, here's the real question. All right, let's get to it. No, here's the real question. You recently did a thing about your favorite things, um, and one of the things you talked about was peach rings. Peach rings, yeah. Peach rings, I'm with, with you candy. on peach rings. The candy. Oh, those are solid. My guilty pleasure. Yeah, where do you settle on the, the uh, watermelons? 
I don't mind the watermelons, but uh-huh. I think peach is my, my go-to. Top. So if I see peach, maybe sour apple. Sour apple's Got up it. there, Got but it. can't go wrong with peach. What's the most peach rings you ate in one sitting? Are you allowed? Maybe you're not allowed to share that. But uh, you no, know, they're actually kind of low calorie. Low, it's not too high bad. sugar. The sugar is the problem. ones that I had actually were. You ever healthy. look at a bag? Oh, uh oh. No, I'm just like these are it. Got to grab it at a gas station, convenience store. I'm like, I gotta get me a little pack to a little snack on. So, uh, to answer your question, maybe just a pack. Okay. I'll say a pack. I'll keep it at a pack. <laughs> that is the real question. So I, I apologize yeah. for judging yeah, you sorry. before Jeez, that. So. Right. And, and we've got to learn that that's how you become an athlete, self-control, one pack. The, Max and I were, were multiple pack guys. <laughs> multiple packs. Hey, what's the key with, because you've, you've experienced this a few times, transitioning from international duty to back into league play? Because it's, it's a bit of a shock, obviously. But yeah. what's, what has worked for you to make sure that it's as fluid as possible? Yeah, I mean, this is the beauty of the game, right? You, you play you know, one game and in one country and next game uh, in another and got to switch between the two teams. But for me, I just enjoy it. I love playing football. Um, you know, I love my teammates in the national team. I love my teammates here. So it's just for me, just enjoyable to, to, to do it day in and day out. How do you get your emotions like up and down too, though? Because like, like you said, it was such a relief for you to finally qualify for the World Cup, especially coming from having been in that first cycle. Then you play against Orlando, and now you're going to, like, redline again yeah. you're taking on the Galaxy. So how do you kind of keep in check there? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely difficult. I mean, a lot of emotions going on. I mean, I went from, like you said, Wednesday qualifying for World Cup. Then Thursday, I'm on a flight to Orlando preparing for, for a match against Orlando. But, like I said, just the life of a footballer. you got to just adapt to whatever comes your way and conquer it. You mentioned that, and we're, we're going to switch, because obviously it's a huge week here for everyone in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about that now. We will get to that. But... Um, <laughs> Being that guy and, and, and just having these these younger players look up to you and what has that relationship been like for guys that we all know now that we've seen like Christian Pulisic and Weston McKinney and, and Tyler Adams and kind of being that not a paternal figure but someone who can <laughs> kind of show them the way. I want to say I'm a. a Do you paternal. feel old when you're in there? I you're mean, not an in, old a, in a way, in a way they keep me young for sure. <laughs> no, nah, no, but they're definitely not great guys. Guys with a lot of experience. I think as a group we've grown a lot. Um, you know, in this past, you know, so years. Um, so, but I mean, those guys, I mean, they know what it, what it takes to, to, to accomplish our goal. So for me, I mean, it's just whatever I can to, to help them in any which way. But I think those guys especially knows, you know, what it takes to, to be at the highest level. I just want to just preface or I'll postscript this because uh, this U.S. team will be the maybe the youngest, youngest in the competition. Yeah. So That's... just keep that in mind when you're watching this U.S. <laughs> team. There's a lot of growth. There. Yeah. Well, again, bring us back to, to the Galaxy match. You obviously took part in that match at Azteca, so you know what it's like to, to feel it. Yeah, to like really yeah. Really feel it. So wh- I'm wondering, when you when you come out of the tunnel, you know you guys get the chance to come out of the tunnel, you, you get booed, you go warm up. Like, what, what are the first, like, what's your kind of checklist in, in when you're in a hostile environment of kind of getting your mind right? Like, what do yeah. you like to feel? Do you like the boos? Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where you kind of just take in each little moment. I think the booze, you know, come with it. It's actually kind of enjoyable because you're like, okay, this is this is, it's a rivalry game. This means something. They're, the fans are passionate. It adds to the environment. It's kind of kind of a special feeling, especially feeling that in Azteca, feeling it in Costa Rica as well, and, um, you know, the past um, uh, qualifier game. So it's one of those things where it's just you kind of just take it all in. And you kind of use the, the warm-up to, to build into the game. And then, you, and then as the game goes on, it's little moments that you try to, um, you know, try to conquer and use those as opportunities to, to get a result. So for me, it's just I don't necessarily have a checklist, but it's just, you know, trying to just, you know, take everything in and enjoy, enjoy the moment. I, I didn't mean to ask this question, but I got to ask it now. <laughs> when when the selections came up for USA Mexico, and they said who's going to we play really in the midfield, around. but everyone we're said Kellen Acosta because he's played well against Mexico. He's had some good games at the Azteca. Why do you think that's uh, that's in your skill set for that opponent, and in in this case at that yeah. venue? I mean, I just enjoy the big games. I mean, Mexico's, you know, at the biggest stage. I mean, it's our biggest rival. So it's a game where we need everyone to step up. And so for me, I use that as an opportunity for me to, to, to make my mark. And, and so far, it's been going well for me. So I'm, I'm hoping to, to continue in that path and hopefully get more opportunities in the future. So for someone that relishes that, then I, I guess you would agree with this statement. We need more games like that in MLS. Where when Definitely. You show up There's a segue stadium, right there. You feel it, right? Um, because I think it'll result in 
better games? Or? For sure, for sure. Even, I mean, I mean, the Saturday is one of them. I mean, for me, I've been on the outside looking in and watching it on TV, but it, I'm starting to, to, to learn what it is and what that environment's like. But it's, I think we need more and more games like that because that's crucial for, for our sport and it's crucial for, for soccer and the MLS and in America. You've obviously been traveling a lot, so you probably haven't got too much of a chance to get in and around LA. But I've seen I've seen a little bit of your Instagram stories. I'm trying, you know, I'm, I'm trying maneuvering have, around. Have some people, you are some doing a good job. Been able to see you out and about and say stuff like, "Hey, man, I hope you beat the Galaxy." Stuff like that, or uh, you think you'll see more of that this week? Maybe more so this week. Um, I mean, I'm still trying to get out and about more so, but um, yeah, hopefully this week I, I run into some people that are you know LAFC fans rather than Carson fans. <laughs> I learned that quickly, right? <laughs> learned that quickly. We didn't even this just became this is gonna be a very popular podcast. Is that as a result? Uh, <laughs> smart guy. Uh, what was your perception of this uh, LAFC Galaxy? Obviously, from afar, and Dallas had its own rivalries, but to see something that's still relatively new and uh, yeah. grab the attention of the league. How, how did yeah, you it's definitely it? it's definitely different. I mean, you've seen goals galore. I mean, uh, each game was definitely exciting. And for me, I'm like. I want to be out there. I mean, just enjoy it from, you know, from the fans' perspective and the environment they bring, the community to, to all the goals, to, to, you know, the chippiness of the game. I mean, everything. I think the, the rivalry had a bit of everything, and it's that enjoyable. So I'm excited to be a part of it. And for you, being a veteran, the, the chippiness, I think that's a level that maybe LAFC has never had going straight into the game because we've always been kind of a young team. I think 2018 we had it, and then we kind of shied away from it. Now we're back into where we've got a really – balance of guys that have understood this is what's going to happen the chippiness kind of embrace it deal with it yeah. what kind of I, I as a new guy but a guy that kind of stands out as a leader what what do you kind of say in the locker room how do you how do you approach that you just got to embrace the the challenge i mean playing away is obviously difficult um but with the rivalry game i mean that's that's what comes with it right i mean it's gonna it's gonna have you know intensity aggressiveness is gonna have you know, maybe some hard fouls going to have hopefully more goals for us than them for sure. Um, but it's just one of those things where you just got to embrace whatever obstacles your way and take it head on. And as a team, I think that will help us grow. And uh, for us, I mean, I, I know that we've had some adversity with, with some of the games that we played, but it's a matter of, you know, getting over that hump. And um, I mean, I'm confident in all my teammates that we'll, we'll be able to, to get a, a positive result if we just stick together. The chance to be the first LAFC team to take three points at Dignity Health Sports Park. What does that, that mean? That been mentioned. Yeah. That would be huge. That would be huge. I mean, right now we're, we're undefeated, but I think for, for our standpoint, we can. there's a lot of room for improvement, and Saturday is another opportunity for us to, to, to do just that. And what's sweeter than to, to beat our rivals? Un unbeaten start. You look fantastic. And then this comes... And it's not, it's supposed to feel a little different this week because it's a rivalry game. But we know when we talk to Coach Chirundolo, it's about, hey, let's, let's. That's the first time I've ever let, so, heard someone say Coach Chirundolo. I like Coach it. Coach Chirundolo. It's got a good sing song to it. I call him Steve. <laughs> not bad. Not I bad. call him Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Coach sometimes. Dolo, some people, that's, that's going to have to catch well, on. That's got to catch on. But, but just the idea of like, hey, let's keep doing what we do. But is it, yeah. how, how, what are the challenges to kind of keep that in check when you hear all the hullabaloo around you? No, you kind of have to just silence that. I mean, let everyone speak for themselves. But for us on the field, this is what matters out here with our teammates growing, um, creating more and more relationships, fine-tuning our, our back line. We, we led in some goals last week and the previous week. So I think uh, for us, it's just focusing on ourselves, focusing on the task at hand. Because I think for us, we can definitely grow. I mean, the Galaxy brings definitely some challenges we, we have to worry about. But for us, I mean, we need to fine-tune some things. Um, and that will help us put us in a great spot for us uh, as we move forward. How close do you guys think you are? Because we talk about it. It feels like the ceiling's still high for this team. For but, sure. Uh, great start, unbeaten, yeah. scoring goals. The two goals last week were a bit of an, an aberration because right. defensively you're so solid. Right. So reaching that where you feel content, where it's like, okay, this yeah. is where we need to I be. I mean, I don't think content could even be in our vocabulary. I think it for us, like you said, our ceiling's high and – we have a lot of improvement for sure um and we got to just take it game by game i think it's important for us each training session is to to get better um but i think we're in a dangerous time where where we think we're good right we're undefeated top of the table but i think that's that's very dangerous to to really think about so we can't be content with where we're at because we can definitely be better and i know for our standpoint as a group that we know that we can be better so we just gotta you know execute really can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs>
In a perfect world, if you watch a World Cup draw, just one word answer. What was the one country? We got England. Everyone's excited. If there's one country that come up, what would excite you more than any other? What would that be? Who would that be? Excite me more than any other? To see the ball come out and say, this is in USA's group. Uh, huh. Was it I really England? I thought about it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was just more excited. I'm like, it, it was just different for me because when I used to watch the draws in the past, it, it, it's a little bit different because I'm, like, I'm not competing in it. So this one hit a little bit different because I'm like thinking this is an opportunity for me to actually play these teams at this stage cool. around the world. <laughs> so I'm like, whoever gets drawn, I mean, I'm excited for whomever. Um, but I mean, the first country that just came to mind when you asked that was just playing the, the host country. And interesting. I think that would be interesting to see the, um, the crowd, the atmosphere. I think that would be kind of special. A little bit different answer. I'm, gl- I'm glad you, I like I'm it. Glad I, like I, I'm glad thoughtful. I asked that yeah. question. That yeah. yeah. was. Yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of you people know what think I Brazil. Out? Brazil. Yeah. I would say Brazil, but to see the country receiving that and being part of that. Right. All right. I mean, I just think back to when uh, the World Cup was in South Africa and that that whole atmosphere they scored the first goal. Vuvuzelas. <laughs> I mean that. I mean that was really special. Mm-hmm. And to see that on TV, I'm like, I mean, what? What can Qatar bring <laughs> being the host country if we play them? World Cup historian <laughs> Kellen Acosta here, ladies and gentlemen. He's something special. That's fantastic. You, I'll are, tell you, you know what's also it's a little weird before we get out of here? Something about your part of the world, great midfielders that come to LAFC. You're from around Frisco, small town in Texas. My, my significant other is from around there. So okay. Okay. Are you from okay. Plano? Or I'm, I'm getting Plano. Plano, Plano, Plano. Plano. She's out actually from Plano, but she says okay. don't say Plano. I remember the water, when I go Plano. down there, I remember the water tower of Plano when you got to go Yeah, it's a big water. Yeah. Yeah. She, she yeah. always says somehow. People will somewhat know Frisco more than Plano. Just Which is Plano's weird, right? Smaller. Yeah. Which is weird. But you, great midfielder, LAFC, Lee Wynn. Lee Wynn. Also from Wynn. that area of the world. Yeah, he's from Plano. So Plano something's guy. going on with midfielders there it's in the Plano. It's the water. It's the water. Yep. Like you said, the big water Dude, tower. I know. I'm <laughs> thinking of another f- player from Plano. Was it? He played for sp- the Kansas City Wizards. Nick. Is it Garcia, defender? Possibly. I think he's from Plano, too. There's a Plano. few Plano, Plano guys. Yep. Football's good down there. Hey, Callum, we're so excited about you, uh, have, uh, obviously, for this game this weekend and what's coming up in November, and we appreciate your time, as always. Yeah, thank Great you. Answers. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We will be, as we do every Tuesday here at the Performance Center, in glorious Alhambra. <laughs> That's from the heart. Make sure you download, subscribe, rate, and review, and we'll see you again with the postscript from the game in Carson, as Callum put it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes! They knocked on the door! Thank you.